Hi guys, welcome to Code Solutions with me, Komatsaram Peculiar. So today, I'm going to be teaching you how to write a clean and easy to use code. And how so, you may ask, through using user-defined functions. So, okay, oftentimes in coding, you would use your already defined functions like your cout and the many more other functions you see in and this but now you can also define your own functions um, and with defining your own functions it enables for you to write a very clean and nice code a very readable one as well so let me just remove okay let me what's happening with my screen okay and remove this text put our compiler on the right format before we go on let me inform you that if you also have a problem question which, which you would love for us to solve here or you have an issue a misunderstanding of something shout out to us on our email address and we will come up to the platform and solve the problem together this enables for you to understand through us coding together and in future, you can also put the same methodology into practice. Okay, so for today, I mentioned we're going to be writing a clean code. And we are going to be doing that using user-defined functions. Okay, so I thought which code would be a bit long, messy inside our main function. And I thought a calculator. We've got four basic operations of the calculator. So now I am going to be declaring those basic for operations because now we are not necessarily just going to be keying them in here, but you need to declare your functions before working on anything. Remember, before working on any variable, you must declare. Don't worry if I'm confusing you. As we go on, I'm going to be dwelling much more into explaining what, what is it that I'm doing. Okay, let's start off with the D in Bodmas division. There, the reason we're having it like this, remember this is just a declaration. A declaration you don't give out values. You are just basically saying this is the framework, this is the data type, this is the name of the variable. So now the name of our function now is called division and it's got the data type integer. And because now what I am planning to do is I want us to divide between two numbers. So now we're saying this function will be dividing between this first number, int, which has got data type int, and this second number, which has got data type int. If you want to say you're going to be dividing between three numbers, you can just always add in another int over there. Okay. So that I don't confuse you, let's continue just with this division function. Okay, so what this means, because we have got three uh, variables inside thrown into our function, it means we need to prompt the user for three numbers which we're going to be working with. Okay, so now let's prompt the user for those input numbers. But remember, before prompting user input, you must clear these variables. Now we have declared our variables. What is now? Let's prompt the user for these numbers so that we can start with our operations. Thing. input prompted from the user uh, the variable which will be holding the final product okay the reason we didn't declare it is because we're using functions but now i'm trying to say if we were not using functions now what we would do is we would say answer this will be the variable to hold our answer and then we would say our answer is equals to this first variable 
divided by the second variable divided by the third variable. That's what it would look like, right? But now, we don't want to do that. We want all these operations in their respective functions. Because suppose now we have got division, we've got multiplication, we've got A, all those other operations. And we would have a list of them inside this main function, right? So now I'll remove this here and I'll go write it into that function. Okay, so which means we can also remove this over there. So now let's go create the operations for this division so that when we come into there to perform operations, we have operations. So now let's now build our division function. It had three variables inside it. We can name them anything, just not what's already used as a variable name. Now, if I were to put in the four elements here, it would be now be what is called a function overloading because this function was declared with three variables over here, but now you're now overloading it. So it's an error. Even if I were to delete this third variable, it would be function underloading. Now you are giving it less of what it was initiated with, right? Declared with initially. So now to build our function. Okay. So with functions, remember they've got a data tab over here. This is what's called a value retaining function because it's got a data type. If you didn't want it to retain anything, uh, have which is your function which just displays something, then you just have it as void. Please check out this video which dwells more into details of different functions we have. Okay, so now this one needs to return an integer. So what it will need to return at the end would be what is division, so it needs to return the ratio. So let's declare this ratio inside, which it needs to declare. But what is this ratio? The ratio is 1 divided by 2 divided by 3. Simple enough, right? So now, start off from the beginning we have declared our division function it's got data type int meaning whatever that it will return at the end will be an integer and it's going to be thrown three variables element in it right okay and then we said there we now built our function division function there is the return statement to say yes we acknowledge that we seen that it's an integer data type now it needs to return that integer so this ratio is indeed an integer but what is the equation for this ratio is this elements right okay so now here it is just variables they don't have values how do we give them values that's where the main function kicks in now in the main function we've only told the user enter three numbers but how do you assign these three numbers to this function this is now where we go to function call a function call assigns your declared or available variable values to the function. So now, what's the name of our function? And then the elements in here, now we're saying those three numbers here, these three ones, we are going to give them these values which we entered. So there, that's how you give them values. Now what you just did was you threw these three numbers which the user had just input into this values. Okay, now to test out before we go any further with the other operations to see if whether the values we did enter were passed into that division function. Let's check if we may be having errors which we could have encountered. Okay, this out so that this number is displayed even in the output because now it just returned it to that function it did not necessarily 
display. Now, what numbers to enter? It will be our 15 divided by 3 divided by 1. 15 divided by 3 is a 5. 5 divided by 1 is a 5. Let's chart with another number. 100 divided by a 2 would give us a 50. And then a 50 divided by a 25 would give us a 2. Great mathematicians. So that's obviously not going to happen because we have got just that over there. But then now I'm just grateful that we show that our values we entered are really did passed to the function. Let's now do another another operation. Let's take subtraction for starters. And then for this one, let's just take in two variables. Two values. Okay, and then in here, let's go now build our subtraction function it's got two values okay so now it's an integer type so it must return an integer value But now we haven't declared this difference is declaring so now let's declare it okay but what is this difference what is it with the sub subtraction in between remember this is subtraction okay now to go call that function as well Now, because this is just two, you can decide if whether you will say subtract between that the first one and that third one. But in between here, you just only need to input two variables. Okay, just to check out if we have everything sorted. Okay. The ratio is a 2 and the difference is a 90. Is this correct? By difference, we had the first number, which is a 100, minus the third number, which is a 10. Yeah, it's a 90, which is great. So you can try out with the addition and the multiplication one. And you can put it onto this comment. And let's just boast about our coding skills. See you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.